know, I've been to a lot of funerals where they worked it out, but this damn sure ain't no funeral, is it? The gig may or may not be up, but the jig is certainly on for Charlie Rangel, literally dancing last night at his 80th birthday celebration in New York. Ethics problems don't mean you can't party. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Washington Post Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Zach Wolf. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know. Twitter.com slash Rick Klein, Twitter.com slash Z Byron Wolf. I am laptopless today. I have a virus on my laptop, so I feel a little uh, uh, a little lost here. But Zach, uh, get us back on track here. What do you know? Top line number one, it's the Jet Blue election. So says uh, Democratic pollster Peter Hart. They have a new Wall Street Journal NBC News poll. Rick, it says that 64% of Americans think the economy is going to get worse before it gets better. 58% of Americans think the uh, country is headed in the wrong direction. Uh, Peter Hart points out Democrats are in charge of the cockpit. They're driving this plane and people want to jump on the inflatable tube and head for the exit. That's right. The Republicans' numbers are actually even worse. But the issue is that there's more Democrats in office, as, as we've known all year. The, across the board, you've seen on almost every issue, the, the, the trust in Democrats and the, and the governing party has dropped over time. And that's the really concerning thing. Uh, less than three months out before this election to see these numbers only headed in one direction. Next up, strange session. If you blinked, you missed it. But the Senate was back in action today in a very unusual session. Only two members of the Senate were there, but that was enough to approve by unanimous consent some $600 million for border security. That, in all likelihood, represents the sum total of Congressional Action on Immigration Reforms Act, despite the pledges from the President and the Democratic leaders to bring something up. There's really no chance of comprehensive reform passing before the election. Zero chance, but immigration, again, is going to be one of the main issues. We have in Florida, one of the gubernatorial candidates there trying to one-up Arizona. We have this new uh, study by Pew that shows that 8% really of uh, striking, yeah. babies are uh, born to illegal immigrants, and that's only going to fuel the 14th Amendment debate. But uh, next up, we have gaff or no gaff. Check out what Harry Reid, uh, Senate Majority Leader, said in Nevada the other day at a campaign event. I don't know how anyone of Hispanic heritage could be a Republican. Okay? Do I need to say more? Now, gaff or not, is that just his opinion? Is he making, uh, you know, it, it, would it be different if he had said something about a different ethnicity? Rick, what, what do you think? He probably does need to say more, first of all. But I, I, I think this is actually, the, Harry Reid says, has gaffes all the time. I don't, wouldn't put that in that category. I, I think this is, look, Hispanic voters are a, are a significant portion of the electorate in Nevada. And certainly, they're, they're, he would like to see more of them vote Democratic. And, and this gins up that, that Hispanic base, which is a little bit disaffected with President Obama and Democrats right now. Now, I don't know this is necessarily a bad thing to get out there. Like I said, Harry Reid, no stranger to this. I don't know that I'd necessarily put this in that category yet. And finally today, Wrangell's Romp, a birthday bash for the former chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee last night. And follow that up with a press conference today where he is just going on and talking and talking. We had lots of interesting images from last night, including David Dinkins giving the finger to a heckler, uh, Michael Bloomberg and Andrew Cuomo and all the rest, uh, all at this at this event. Obviously, they're honoring Charlie Wrangell, the man, the, the Democrats just want this to go away, but there is no chance of that. And Charlie Rangel seems to just be getting louder by the day. Louder, and he had a press conference today where he was clearly drinking in the limelight. He had on a white suit, no tie, <laughs> pocket square. He looked great, but he was blaming the media, and, you know, this is not going away for Democrats. And the trial uh, later this fall, you know, probably before the elections, is going to be something the Republicans will point to. Louder clothing and all, indeed. <laughs> We're joined today by Neera Tandon, who's the, the chief operating officer of the Center for America. American progress and uh, also a, a, a veteran of the Obama White House. And, and Neera, I, I want to start with the, the broad pieces of the agenda we're seeing come together. The, the, the quick action today on immigration, mm -hmm. we saw the House come back. It seems like things are scattershot right now where they're, they're trying to chalk up wins wherever they can. Do you see kind of a path legislatively of things that need to get done right between before November for Democrats to have get, put themselves in a better position? Well, I think on the immigration issue, we've had a big change, which is the Republican Party has shifted dramatically right over the last two, three, four years on immigration. Several years ago, you had President Bush leading the charge for comprehensive immigration reform. Now the Republican Party is talking about 
birth status for Im illegal immigrant children. I mean, the conversation has dramatically shifted. The Democratic Party cannot actually rely on those votes. But I do think there, there are important issues going forward. The most important issue Democrats have to really focus on is the tax cuts for higher income people. That gives them a way to actually talk about economic issues right. in September and actually talk about it in a way that plays to the populism in the country. People are blaming uh, Wall Street and others, and actually the wealthier are doing well in this economy. It's everyone else that's not doing well. And so that's why I think the tax cut issue is an important issue for Democrats to actually talk about and win in September. But people are so concerned about government spending. They're so concerned about, you know, the future Democrats, the things they have to point to, the stimulus, health care. Are, are they going to be in a position of running away from, from their achievements? Uh, is the Obama paradox really going to play, play a, a factor? I mean, I think Democrats actually have to talk about those issues that play well for them. There are issues in health care. There are issues around insurance regulations. Those kinds of things are very popular. They are there because of Democrats. Those, those things are going into effect September 23rd. Uh, things like no more pre-existing conditions, annual limits, those real protections against insurance companies. The they're coming online in the middle of this debate, and it's Republicans who want to take those away. So it's up to Democrats to make that sharp debate for, for the country. These are things we've done. These are things that you actually like. And these are things that the Republicans, if they come into office, will go back on, take away from you. That's a hard debate sometimes in today's media culture, but it's something that the Democrats have to do. Yura, we've seen uh, in the last couple of days in particular uh, some angst on the left play out. Robert Gibbs' comment uh, earlier this week uh, seeming to belittle the political left. Uh, it really rubbed a lot of liberals the wrong way. Uh, I know that this is something that the White House has, has felt for some time, that the left is not giving them the credit that they deserve on a lot of things. But what are they missing? What, what, what do you feel like is the, the piece that liberals aren't understanding about this, that they continue to voice such frustration about the pace of change? Look, I think that the tough issue here is that this president has actually been very successful legislatively. I mean, if you look at the panoply, if you compare this president to past presidents, I was very proud to be in the Clinton administration. We unfortunately had a Republican Congress for most of the time. These kinds of changes were, were dreams in our eyes to have comprehensive health care reform to have financial regulatory reform. Masses of legislation that would take years to get done have gotten done in a very short period of time. So why doesn't the left get that then? So I think one of the challenges is that you know, there was a lot of change promised. And Washington is difficult to change. You have a president and a movement that was created that came to Washington, and Washington has in itself been a hurdle. And it's important for liberals to understand that there are big choices in this election, and we need to keep fighting and keep pushing for change and not create the circular firing squad or fighting, firing against each other. And it's important for the White House to understand that part of its role is actually to fire up the left and give them an argument and make the argument about Republicans, not make the argument about fighting ourselves. Well, it seems clear that some some seats will be lost in November. And is is that going to be the? Uh, is it going to take that long to fire up the left? Is it going to be a bunch of losses in November that's going to be what fires them up again? Well, I hope people recognize, and really, the challenge for the president and the party itself is to make the case about what the Republicans will do, and if they are successful. Uh, the base and the left will see that the ch what the Republicans will do will be so much worse than what we're what we're engaging in now, and that's why they will get more fired up than they have been so far. But liberals look at this White House and they say public option, they say war in Afghanistan, they say gay rights, don't ask, don't tell, and the Defense of Marriage Act. They, they look across the board and say, look, we thought we were being promised more change, more quickly, mm -hmm. bigger things happening. Why shouldn't they be disappointed that these things haven't happened? The, you know, the lament is, you know, why isn't the president fighting harder? And I think the issue really is that the president has staked out the right position on all of these issues. And he has made a decision, which is to accomplish things, get things done take right the legislative accomplishment even if you know we don't get a public option now i argue i've argued strongly that getting 32 million americans covered taking this big step on health reform was worth it because that is a big big accomplishment but the idea that liberals are you know attacking him for not accomplishing enough we have to recognize that they, we need to change the way washington does business and make a bigger case with the with the country and really have an argument with the tea party and the right not an argument just with the president last week we had that vote in uh, in missouri where you know the individual uh, requirement to buy health insurance they rejected it mm. howard dean said uh, shortly after he thought that that 
element of health care would be gone uh, before most of the law was enacted in a couple of years. What do you think on that? I think Howard Dean is totally wrong. I think that Howard Dean uh, and I have often disagreed, but the <laughs> idea that health care reform will survive without an individual mandate, the first thing that will happen was well, prices will go up. Mm -hmm. So and the idea that we're going to all support health reform when prices go up dramatically because we don't have a mandate is wrong and wrong-headed. And it's the wrong strategy. And even the president, who, as we all recall, right. did not strongly well, support, support an individual yeah. mandate, came around and supported it because he recognized recognize that it's a critical element to this right. legislation going forward. All right, Neera Tandon of the Center for American Progress, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Great, thanks.